Well, good evening and welcome to our inaugural Golden Key International Honor Society inauguration induction ceremony. You all should be so proud because you are in the top 15% of the classes college wide. And that is a significant accomplishment and something that we hope you will be proud of and carry on from here forward. And as part of the honor of being in the top 15% of your classes college wide, you have been invited to be members of Golden Key International Honor Society, which is a prestigious and very honorable society. I welcome all of you. My name is Deborah Eldridge. I am an instructor with the Department of Policy and Legal Studies, and I actually have responsibility for the business law courses that are taught um, from that department for the College of Business. I am an advisor for Golden Key along with Cynthia, Dr. Cynthia Gray in the veterinary department. You are all upper division bachelor students and soon you will most likely be graduating from St. Petersburg College and with the honor of being able to say that in addition to all of the accolades and accomplishments that you've had here at St. Petersburg College, you now can add to that membership in Golden Key International Honor Society. It's my pleasure again to welcome all of you. Throughout this ceremony, you will learn ways to become more involved with Golden Key. You will also gain knowledge of the benefits of being a member. But the most important thing we want you to take away from this event is, as part of this society and our chapter, you are part of something much bigger. By becoming a member of Golden Key, you gain much more than a line on your resume. You become part of an extended family of peers, mentors, and connections, all working together towards a common goal. Golden Key members from around the globe are united by their commitment to excellence in academics, leadership, and service and through this commitment to better the world around them. As physician and author George Sheehan said, success means having the courage, the determination, and the will to become the person you believe you were meant to be. It is Golden Key's inspiration and mission to help you realize this potential. And we're here for you every step of your journey. With more than 30 years of rich tradition, we are committed to our pillars, which are academics, leadership, and service. Having chartered more than 375 chapters in seven countries, Golden Key has established networks that span all levels from the campus to the world. Opportunities abound for you to become involved, develop your leadership, and realize your potential. Golden Key believes in a community built on mutual respect, encouragement, and teamwork. As a global organization, we value diversity and respect differences among our members. Our constant goal is to make Golden Key the most recognized and respected honor society in the world. We plan to achieve this by championing education-based service initiatives, providing value to our members, and building powerful and lasting relationships with corporate and nonprofit partners who value excellence in academics, leadership, and service. You are all part of this now. Welcome to Golden Key. It is now my pleasure to introduce Cynthia Gray, who will advise you on SPC's chapter of Golden Key. Thank you, Deborah. Good evening. It is an honor to be here tonight to recognize your achievements. I would like to congratulate you, our new members, for having proven your academic excellence at St. Petersburg College. 
by establishing yourselves in the top of your class. For this, you should all be proud. I would also like to recognize your family and friends among us today, as they have provided the supportive environment in which you have thrived. Consider our Golden Key chapter here at St. Petersburg College your home. Golden Key is an organization with a global presence. Housed on campuses in Australia, Canada, Malaysia, and New Zealand, South Africa, the Bahamas, and the United States, chapters provide members with a variety of services and connections that range from leadership and volunteer opportunities to internships and training programs. You have the opportunity to become involved with our chapter right now. Much of what we do involves working with each other, assisting others within the college and community, and having some fun along the way. We look forward to having each of you involved in our chapter activities this coming year. We encourage you to take advantage of the opportunities Golden Key extends to you. Apply for scholarships, attend leadership summits, become leaders of your chapter, and practice with your chapter, or sorry, pra participate with your chapter. A chapter is only as strong as its members, and you are the key to its success. We welcome you to our Golden Key family. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Sarah Schoberg from the Golden Key International Honor Society headquarters. Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? Pretty good? Great. Um, first, please allow me to introduce myself. As Dr. Gray said, my name is Sarah Schoberg, and I am the representative who is able to be here from headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. As a representative from headquarters, it's truly a privilege and an honor to be able to be here with you today. Since starting work with Golden Key in June of 2008, I've truly come to believe in the quality and the benefit of this organization due largely in part to my ability to travel to colleges and universities across not only the United States, but also um, to Canada. Last November, I got to go to the Bahamas chartering ceremony, which was pretty awesome, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I've had the opportunity to meet with leadership from many different campuses. And during my travels, I've not only been struck by the diverse nature of our student body, but also by the level of achievement, ambition, and dedication that exists within each of you. And I really want to take a second just to recognize that. I think it's a statement of who you are and where you want to go with your life, that you're here today. Um, I'm struck not only, though, when I attend new member recognition ceremonies and chartering ceremonies such as this one by the caliber of the new members, but also by the supportive nature of the friends and family who come to support those individuals and in that you are the reason that these students are here today. You're the reason that they've made it to this point. So um, I know that we just recognize you, but um, I just wanted to say that again to let you know that I appreciate your support of our members. Since its founding on November 29th, 1977 at Georgia State University, a lot of people wonder why our headquarters are in Atlanta, that's why, it's where we were founded. Um, over two million scholastically high achieving students have joined Golden Key. We just passed the two millionth member this fall at Arizona State University. We're pretty proud of that. Again, um, these students represent over, we've actually just hit 400 um, campuses across the globe, but they also represent 190 nationalities, which is something we're really proud of um, being an, an inclusive honor society. As the society continues to grow and evolve, however, um, several things remain constant. These are rep represented both in our mission to enable members to realize their potential, as well as our pillars, which you just heard, academics, leadership, and service. One thing we're also dedicated to, though, is providing you um, benefits for your membership. Why did you join? I hope you saw something that was worth it to join, um, but I wanna take just a second to tell you about some of those things. Um, through student recognition programs, you are able to attend new member recognition ceremonies such as this one. You'll receive a press release with your certificate that you can release to local campuses or local papers if you'd like. 
Um, you can purchase graduation regalia, cords and stoles and medallions to wear at graduation. Um, check with your campus to make sure which they prefer though. Some campuses have a preference. Um, through member benefits, uh, you have access to over a million dollars annually in scholarships and awards. So a million dollars this year, a million dollars next year. I would encourage you to go online, see what you think you're eligible for, see what you're interested in, apply. Our scholarships are really under applied for. I think people talk themselves out of it. They're like, oh, it's an honor society, everybody's gonna apply and everybody's gonna be so qualified. Our numbers are really low. So if you think that you're qualified, submit your application. Um, those include 10 $1,000 GEICO Life Scholarships. We have over 15 $10,000 scholarships available to help you with your post-baccalaureate education. So again, go online, check them out, um, and see what's right for you. We also have a number of graduate assistantships, if any of you are planning to go on to graduate school, several of which are valued at over $25,000. Study abroad discounts um, and partnerships with companies like ProWorld and the International Scholar Laureate Program. So Golden Key is really proud to be able to recognize you for this achievement. We also have partnerships um, uh, with companies who offer discounts on things like car and health insurance, um, graduation test prep courses, technology, and many other things. So again, take a look at the website. Um, we also, I want to just say really quickly, have and allow you access to many not so tangible benefits as well. Leadership development at, um, we have international, both international and regional conferences. There will be leadership opportunities here on campus. We have some online leadership development courses. So take a look um, and make sure that you get out of it what you think you can. Um, imagine, just for a second, the possibilities if you really utilize the network that you've become a part of. I'd like to take just a moment to recognize the honorary members who are being inducted with us tonight. We're so welcome to have you become part of our family. They will be introduced shortly, so I don't want to steal that thunder. Um, and I would also like to take a moment to thank the advisors who have been working with the chapter to get it going here at St. Petersburg College. They've been amazing, and I know they're going to continue to do great things um, with the students here. So thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I would now, and this might be news to some people on the stage, didn't have a chance to prep you beforehand, so apologies. Um, I would like to now do the presentation of the charter. This is the chartering ceremony here at St. Petersburg College. So I would like to invite forward Dr. William Law, um, Dr. Ann Cooper, Dr. Cynthia Gray, and Dr. Deborah Eldridge to sign the charter. The charter reads, Golden Key International Honor Society, to whom these letters may come, greetings. The council, by virtue of the authority vested in it, grants this charter to St. Petersburg College with all rights, privileges, and honors thereunto appertaining. In witness whereof the seal of the society and the signatures of the council and local officers are hereunto affixed. As a representative of Golden Key International Honor Society, I hereby formally announce that um, St. Petersburg College is officially installed as the 399th member institution inducted into our family. You just missed 400. <laughs> if you have any questions or concerns or anything regarding Golden Key, um, please feel free to see either myself or one of your advisors after the ceremony concludes. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. So again, congratulations, and I know each and every one of you will go out and make not only Golden Key proud, 
that you'll make your campus community proud and those um, individuals, whether they're here or not, who helped you get here along the way. So thank you so much. And at this time, I would like to introduce back to the podium, um, Dr. Deborah Eldridge, your primary faculty advisor for Golden Key, who will be recognizing the new honoring members tonight. Thank you. Well, as um, Sarah has said, every year on campuses, small groups of honorary members are inducted into Golden Key. Honorary membership is conferred to recognize outstanding faculty, administrators, and community leaders who have excelled in their research, teaching, profession, and service. Honorary members play a very important role here at St. Petersburg College because we value all that honorary members do to assist our chapter, to help the society grow, which includes attending events, serving as champions of Golden Key, and in communities around the world, acting as role models and mentors. So with that said, I would like to first introduce Kay Berniston. We will be presenting to Ms. Berniston today but first, I would like to say a little bit about Ms. Berniston. She is, for those of you who don't know, our Senior Vice President of Baccalaureate Programs, all of the programs. She obtained her bachelor's from Western, Univers Western Michigan University and her master's of public administration from the University of Central Florida. She began her career at Daytona Community College in 1978 and then worked her way up to the position of Vice President for Planning and Research and Development before becoming Dean of the College of Advancement at Mercer University, Mercer County Community College in 1998, when she joined St. Petersburg College and has since worked her way up to Senior Vice President of Baccalaureate Programs. And that is just a small sampling of the accolades of Ms. Berniston. So, Ms. Smith, if you will please. I'm here to give to you your certificate and your pin of honorary membership. Thank you. Next, I would like to introduce Dr. Ann Cooper. Dr. Cooper is our Senior Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs. Dr. Cooper is well-traveled. She received her bachelor's from the University of Hawaii, her master's in experimental psychology from the University of Texas, and then her doctorate from the University of Wales in the United Kingdom. Her doctorate she received in philosophy. Dr. Cooper in education. Dr. Cooper began her career in the healthcare industry working for Kuakini Hospital in Hawaii and in 1978, in, excuse me, 1987 became the executive director of Alpha, a new beginning in St. Petersburg, Florida. Then she went on to join St. Petersburg College as an instructor in 1990 where she worked her way up to the Senior Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs. Her accolades don't stop there, however, because she has participated in the President's Roundtable at Oxford University, where the subject matter evolved around educational leadership and policy development, and the list goes on from there. So please, welcome Dr. Ann Cooper. I would now like to bestow the honor, rare membership on uh, Golden Key to Dr. Oliver. Dr. Jim Oliver is the provost of this campus, of the Seminole campus. Also of our e-campus, which is in charge of online learning. He oversees the planning and operations for the college-wide web and instructional, excuse me, instructional technology services department. And recently concluded a large $11 million federal grant. 
named Project Eagle. Through, e through Project Eagle, St. Petersburg College has grown the largest electronic, which is online course offering in the state of Florida and has won numerous state and national awards. Dr. Oliver has over 30 years of experience in a variety of higher educational leadership positions in New York, Pennsylvania, Indiana, North Carolina, and of course here in Florida. He served as Vice President for Planning at St. Petersburg College before becoming Provost and immediately prior to joining the staff at St. Petersburg College, he served as Executive Vice President at Pfeiffer University in North, in North Carolina. Dr. Oliver regularly presents at conferences, and I can attest to that, because my first meeting with Dr. Oliver was when he and I presented at a Sustainable Florida Conference, uh, I think two years ago at this point in time, and I remember being so impressed with Dr. Oliver's presentation. So he has gone on from there. Dr. Oliver received his bachelor's degree in philosophy from the State University of New York College at Buffalo, and his master's and PhD in higher education administration from Florida State University. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Oliver and awarding him his honorary membership. And then last, but by no means least, Dr. William D. Law, Jr., who is our acting and permanent, hopefully for quite some time, president of St. Petersburg College. He is our sixth president and became our president in June of 2010. At the time of his appointment, Dr. Law was serving as president of Tallahassee Community College, a position he had held since 2002. Before joining Tallahassee Community College, Dr. Law had been the founding president of Montgomery College in suburban Houston, serving in that role for 10 years. From 1988 to 1992, Dr. Law was president of Lincoln Land Community College in Springfield, Illinois. Early in his career, Dr. Law served as staff director of the Florida House of Representatives, Committee on Higher Education, and worked for the Florida Board of Regents. In 1981, he became the vice president of institutional and program planning at St. Petersburg College, then known as St. Petersburg Junior College, my alma mater, where he worked until 1988. Dr. Law earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in English from Lemoyne College and a Master's degree and PhD in Design and Management of Post-Secondary Education from Florida State University, another of my alma maters. In his several presidential positions, Dr. Law has become well known as an advocate of economic and work workforce development, student success, and community outreach. He currently serves on the boards of numerous organizations, including Workforce Florida, Pinellas County Economic Development, WorkNet Pinellas, Community College Research Board, and the list goes on. His effort to increase student success has allowed him to work at state and national levels and has provided opportunities such as consulting with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, providing expert testimony to the United States House of Representatives, and serving as a member of the Florida Task Force on Community College Baccalaureate Education. When not working, Dr. Law enjoys running and has completed more than two dozen marathons, including five Boston marathons. He also enjoys traveling and following new technologies. He and his wife, Pat, are the parents of two adult sons. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Law. And although Dr. Law is sitting down, it's just for a moment. <laughs> um, Golden Key International Honor Society, founded on November 29, 1977, as Sarah said, is an academic honor society and recognizes and encourages scholastic achievement and excellence among college and university students from all academic disciplines. Dr. Law is going to now, as our keynote speaker, present to all of you. Please welcome Dr. Law.
thank you very much. And uh, I was trying to put my pin on so I would look official to, to all of you. Uh, welcome. Uh, it is my pleasure to be with you tonight. Let me, let me say a couple of words about the, the folks up here, though. First of all, to our, our wonderful factory, Jason, and, and support staff and our visitors, uh, this is an honor. Let the record show that I agreed to come before I knew I would get the honorary status, okay? When they told me we were going to do this, I said, I, I really want to be part of this with our students. Uh, these are milestones in the development of a great college like ours, and when we can get together to celebrate that, it's part of, I hope you feel how important this is, because I certainly do. Uh, secondly, I should uh, tell you that my team with you tonight are some of the very best educators I've had a chance to work with over a, a now too long career. Um, but if you want, you need to meet these folks after the, uh, after the ceremony. They are very accomplished individuals. They're all very well met and easy to talk to, but they are really good role models. Uh, these are women of tremendous accomplishment. Uh, Dr. Oliver has uh, energy and, and accomplishments that, that are uh, worth learning about. And these are individuals who will share with you. Same with our faculty, but you already know how to, uh, uh, to find our faculty, our wonderful faculty. So please do that. Please, please, please do that. These are, are really, really fine people. So thank you very much. Uh, I did my research on, on Golden Key and uh, a little bit of who we are, so you, you've heard their side, but there are 75 of you who are being recognized. Not all could be here tonight. In the, why, I asked Dr. Oliver if I needed to stay at this podium, because other than that, I'd be wandering around. This, I, my voice is, is loud enough to hear, but we have um, perhaps as many as, as two dozen folks online with us. Uh, they couldn't be here tonight, so through the Wired world, they can participate, and we can certainly uh, welcome them, and, and they can certainly feel the, uh, the enthusiasm that we have here. So uh, that's the nature of the world we face, so thank you very much. When, uh, when folks were talking about the, uh, uh, reading my, my resume is, is always a, uh, what, what's the old joke? My mother would even believe this stuff. Um, uh, the, I would, I'm very proud of that. I, I've had a wonderful career and, and uh, I've, my, you know, good opportunities to do other things. I would trade it all for a seat out there. I think you are at the point of, of our human development, of the, the history of the world. You are at a flex point in history. The world will be different as we go forward than we have any reason to believe today. We don't know what it's going to look like. It's changing in front of our eyes, and that's the scary part. It's changing, but we don't know how to get to the new part yet. Um, and I, I want to share a little bit. I, I, I have always uh, enjoyed travel. I was a junior year abroad student, lived in Madrid, Spain in the 60s, I'm, I'm happy to say. Um, and the world was a very different place then. There's no internet. The phone calls were, uh, they were very hard to make internationally, uh, lots of different things in travel, but I, I caught the bug. I've made 27 different international trips in my life since then. Uh, my wife Pat and I go wherever we can. I've been to, uh, to Africa and Israel, been to uh, Egypt, Morocco, and Israel uh, in the last uh, two years because I woke up one day and realized the center of our attention is on a part of the world where I don't think I could string together three good sentences. The future that we are dealing with has to do with resolution of enormous conflict in that part of the world, and I didn't know a single thing about it. Uh, I know how to, to do the headlines. I know all the talking points. I know how to watch shouting heads on TV. I couldn't tell you a single thing that I knew for sure myself about the Middle East and of Africa. And I think as we look back, timing was really good. We were in Israel right when President Obama made his Jerusalem speech. And we saw the geopolitics on the ground. And we saw the anxiety on the side of the Israelis. And we saw, we made a long trip through the uh, West Bank, through the, the Jordan River Valley, all the way to the Golan Heights. And we went to a Palestinian refugee camp. And you watched the 
the, the, the contested establishments going up inside of the refugee camp. And you try to figure out, where's the center of this dialogue? It, it consumes us, but we don't know anything about it. Um, so what does that do? It leads to learning more. So we decided we would go to Egypt. We needed to know a little more about that. We, I had the good fortune of being uh, the president of the, out of the Tallahassee Community College, and we had hosted some Egyptian students with us. Wonderful young men and women, people that you would want to know. Uh, and when they found out we were going to be in Egypt, nothing would do except that they host us back. So we spent the day with our former students, took the train from Cairo to Alexandria and, and met with them and, and talked to, to their friends and, and learned their insight. Those students, by the way, were at Tahir Square. While that, the tumult was going on in Cairo, I was in contact with one of our former students. And to hear the passion in his voice was something to behold. I was deathly afraid for him. Um, his resolution was to see this to its end, the end that he had committed himself to. Um, and, and these were genial young friends who we had sat on the, the train with telling tales about our times together and how life treats us. And, and they went from great friends as students to uh, being at the center of the world uh, but the world we live in allowed me to communicate with them at that key point, and it was a stunning opportunity. I, they, they're doing fine, but I was very, very nervous for them, very nervous. And then Pat and I, uh, as in part of our continued development, went to Morocco last year. And we were in Morocco, and it's a wonderful place, and it was a great tourist trip. It wasn't particularly insightful, but right after we left, all of the tumult in the, middle, in the uh, North African countries broke out. So you look at night on the news and you see the very places where you were two weeks or three weeks previously uh, now are the center of, of everybody's attention on the globe and how we're going to resolve these kinds of issues. And I tell these stories because that's the world you are going to inherit. Uh, I think we could spend all our time saying, woe is us. As I told you, I wouldn't do that. I'd trade for a seat where you are. I'd trade to be part of the dialogue of where we're going. But I'd figure out what skills I needed to be part of that dialogue. I'd figure out what background, what experiences, what friends I would make. How am I going to be part of that dialogue? How will it impact me in my career? How will it impact me with my family? How will it impact with me with the things I want to do to be a productive citizen here in our country? I, I dropped off a, a, something just to, to talk from a, a, one of my very good friends who I'd been uh, in, in Israel with, um, uh, recently got back. He, he called me and said, uh, hey Bill, I've got this great opportunity to go to Jordan. In, in fact, our trip to, to Egypt included a trip to Jordan. Uh, he said, um, I know you, you were there last year. What do you think? I said, gee, it was wonderful, Randy. It was a wonderful place to be. It's a very modern country. There's some great sites. I mean, it's the whole Indiana Jones Temple of Doom sites are there at Petra. I mean, it's really kind of a fun place to go. I said, oh, I wouldn't worry about it. Egypt was, was boiling over. I said, gee, they're, they're okay there. Two days later, the riots are on the street in, in Amman. Uh, but Randy went with a group called the Society of International Business Fellows. And, and they are 20, and, and they were there for a, a leadership development conference. It's, tell me if this sounds familiar. He was with 25 young leaders, Christian and, Christian and Muslim, ages 25 to 40, from Jordan, Egypt, Lebanon, Oman, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, and Palestine. So young men and women just like yourselves from all over the Middle East coming together to talk and learn share, understand the common uh, roots of their problems, find ways to solve those problems. So those vehicles are out there for you. Those are opportunities waiting for you to be part of. But you have the opportunity to do that. And I think tonight you take those steps to do that. So, so Randy talks about spending time with people who had protested in Tahir Square. Uh, he talks about the inspiring personal story of a woman from Saudi Arabia who organized systems of communicating through Twitter when the Egyptian government cut off cell phone and internet service. He tells me there was not a dry eye in the room as a young Muslim woman told of waiting a few days before joining the protests 
but then determining she had an obligation to get involved for the future of her country. She helped organize the delivery of medical supplies and food to people in the square. The world out there is ready for your engagement. Uh, you have to get some credentials, you have to get some experience, you have to celebrate your journey as part of it tonight, but there is a wonderful world out there. You may not choose to do all of the international stuff. One of the pillars of, of this society is service. My Lord, we have opportunities for service in our own country. My fondest dream is to get you onto some of those boards that I'm currently on. I want to get off. I've done my time. I'm happy to be part of those organizations. But they need some new thinking. They need some younger thinking. They need some, some people who have different experiences uh, that can start to refresh and renew our community in ways that are vitally important. You know, we do all this, and, and then it all comes back down to home. I'm, I'm here tonight because St. Petersburg College is a wonderful place. Couldn't be prouder to have been selected here after a, a career of, uh, with several stops along the way. But one of the things we need to do for our students, and one of the signals I'm sending by my presence tonight, and I hope you're receiving this signal, is that our students have to have a global perspective, and we have to have lots of opportunities for them to practice what they're learning in the classroom. We're delighted that you have a seat in the classroom, and we're very proud of the quality of instruction that, our, that we provide to you through that. It's not enough in the world that we face. A seat in the classroom is not sufficient for your learning. We have to find new ways to give you additional uh, opportunities and experiences, chances to put that learning to the test, chances for you to expand on that learning, chances for you to try some new learning. So all of that comes together. So my signal tonight is one, congratulations. Second, congratulations to the families. Uh, as I look at, at some, we're all parents at heart, and when our sons and daughters and loved ones are in the front row, that's worth celebrating for. And then thirdly, I, I want to brag a little bit on us, but tell you, we, are, we stand behind you, but you are taking an important step on our behalf tonight, and we stand with you as you move forward. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Thank you. So much, Dr. Law. At this time, we will begin our recognition of the new members in attendance. And Dr. Law, if you wouldn't mind assisting us with passing out the certificates, Jason's going to help you with that. So it is now time to recognize you, to provide you with your certificates and for your outstanding achievement. When I call your name, please come to, forward to the, receive your certificate at the podium, or excuse me, by Dr. Law. So for Yadira Ailman. If there are families and friends who would like to take a photo, come on right to the front, okay? Tonight's the night. If we would like you to step up as your loved one, we would recognize you to do that. I hope that's okay. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Sarah Bower. Cherie Clark. <laughs> Linda Ann Cole. Stephen Crawford. Marnie Lynn Detrick. Adele Deegan. Laura Lou Freeman.
Sam Frontera. Casey Hall, Cassie Hall, Trudy Fooch. Michelle Gates, Lorna Lee. McIntyre. Grace Dunlap. Stephen Matthias or Matthews. Gina Marie McCabe. Tiffany Mickelson. Donna Miller. Joyce Ann Myers. Maria Odak. Justin Powell. Lori Scribner. Thank you. 
silver bladed cheech. And Deborah Wise. And Dr. Gray will now read those uh, members who are attending remotely. Okay. Before I proceed, is there anyone here who is in attendance who has not received their uh, certificate that we haven't acknowledged? If you, ha if you are here and we haven't done that, would you please step forward? Okay, you've done a good job then this evening. Um, as Dr. Law pointed out, there we are in an age of technology and not everyone could be here tonight. We have approximately um, 15 members who are joining us via um, the webinar or the uh, web video and we'd like to recognize them and uh, so I'd like to briefly read their names. Barbara Brooks, Elizabeth Crow, Christina Delato. Don Ellis, Kara Hodges, Ronald Kaiser, Crystal Lopez, Ronald Perez, Kirsten Riley, Marcus Schrader, Daniel Shira, Christy Smith, Kathy Sullivan, and Linda White. And we'd like to take a few moments uh, to recognize those people who could not be here at all, either via the web or in person. Um, to let you, to not only honor them, but to show you what a rich, uh, growing uh, membership we have within the Golden Key organization. Ryan Agnew, Teresa Amico, Kristen Aspinall, Sarah Atkins, Heather Banting, Jennifer Blay, James Brown Jr., Brian Peru, Rachel Cooper, Cheryl Davis, Grace Dunlap, oh, Grace is here, sorry, Grace. <laughs> Jennifer Gavin LaForte, Joy Green, Bethany Greenley, Marissa Hoffman, Kimberly Jackson, Michelle Joycelyn, Annette Kidder, Aaron Kuehr, Heather Kunke, David Laws, Bonnie Logrie, Christopher Lynn Sr., and if I might add, I know why Bonnie is not here. She's currently giving her capstone presentation so she can graduate in a week. <laughs> Angela Marchant, Paula McElligott, Jaina Meyer, Beryl Odour, Jonathan Phillips, Jennifer Quarles, Marjorie Saris, Heike Scott, who is having her capstone graded by me this evening, uh, Terry Smith, Ryan Southwell, Kathy Sullivan, Elizabeth Wade, Kristen Wassenaar, and Kimberly Ziak. My congratulations to you all, those present, those on our webcast, and those who have been accepted. You have achieved an amazing achievement at being 15% in the top 15% of the entire college population. So I congratulate you. Would you all stand as I read the charge, please, for the Golden Key? You are now inducted as members of Golden Key International Honor Society. Your selection to Golden Key was based on all that you have accomplished. Membership in Golden Key is a privilege and an honor, which bears with it certain responsibilities. 
aspire to maintain and promote high standards of academic achievement. Serve as leaders among your peers as seekers of wisdom. Be a person of good character, upholding high moral and ethical standards. Let integrity and mutual respect for others guide your every decision and action. Endeavor to value and respect others' differences. Believe that strength lies in inclusiveness and in the ability to collaborate and learn from one another. Set the standard for excellence by exploring new possibilities. It is through innovation and perseverance that we can build a better future together. Academics, leadership, and service will be your guides on the path to realizing your potential. We charge you to make a commitment to support the activities of Golden Key at St. Petersburg College. John F. Kennedy stated, to those who much is given, much is expected. As a member of Golden Key International Honor Society, you have chosen to live as a seeker of wisdom with an understanding that with, all, with the call of leadership comes the duty of service to others. You have demonstrated your ability, now fulfill your potential. Congratulations to all our new members. Again, you should be proud of your accomplishments. You may be seated. Now, Kay Bernstein is going to give us our closing remarks. I want to congratulate all of you and thank you for coming. And I want to thank those that are on the Webinex joining us, joining us. And I also want to thank all the family members that joined us and our faculty members and our deans who were here and our directors of curriculum who came to watch this honorary ceremony also. As um, Dr. Gray charged you with all those endeavors in the near future, I would like to invite you to participate in the new chapter um, meeting that's going to um, occur on May 18th. It's in your brochure. We're going to be having it on the Webinex and we're going to have it in person. So please mark that down because that's where you can start beginning some of these activities that Dr. Law was telling you about. You can become engaged. You can have, you can be involved in some of the planning. You can do summits. You can travel. You can take leadership roles. It's all an important piece of your future and the next steps in your career. So I want to in invite you to do that. I also want to thank a few people before we begin our little ceremony outside, but I would want to thank a few people, and I want to thank Casey for taking all these pictures for us. Thank you, Casey. Ken Hayward, who connected all of our people from the webinar. I want to thank our two faculty advisors who have worked tirelessly to plan this whole ceremony and have devoted their time and their energy and their efforts, Dr. Eldridge and Dr. Gray. I want to thank Sarah for coming down from Atlanta that was, you know, great of her to organize this. They've been very encouraging and there's so many opportunities for our students that we're really proud to be a part of it. And I really want to thank Jason Krupp. Jason has really pulled this whole thing together. He has researched this for us. He has investigated all the best opportunities for our students. He has recruited our faculty members. He has recruited our students. And I really want to thank him for everything he's done. Thank you so much. And of course, I want to thank our honorary members. They are the foundation of our institution and really make a great place for all of us to earn and learn and work. So we really enjoy that. I want to invite you for refreshments outside so you can start talking to each other. You can start talking to us and enjoy the evening. Thank you very much. <laughs>